Well, hello to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Of course, it is that time of the day where we are closely tracking the tropics. I'm looking out there, scanning the skies to see if there's anything we need to be worried about. Of course, we are less than a week away from what is typically the busiest part of hurricane season, and that is the month of September. So we are closely keeping our eye on things out there and hoping that we don't get anything like what we see on this graphic. We are looking at the top five costliest hurricanes. This is based on the data from 1900 to 2021. And these are some serious hurricanes that did some major damage. And of course, one of these we know about all too well. Of course, that's number two on the list, Harvey. But let's start with Katrina. I was actually living in the Beaumont area in Southeast Texas when Katrina hit about a month after that Rita hit my area. Of course, Katrina hit the New Orleans area and it was horrible. That was back in 2005. It was a category three when it made landfall, but cost a lot of money and did a lot of damage. In fact, about $180 billion worth of damage from catastrophic Hurricane Katrina. Of course, Harvey dumped 50 inches of rain for parts of the Houston area. That was back in 2017, major catastrophic flooding here. It actually strengthened to a category four at one point, costing over 100 $43 billion worth of damage. So that one was certainly a major catastrophic hurricane as well. Number three on the list, Maria back in 2017, over $100 billion worth of damage. Cat four at one point, Sandy back in 2012, a category one, $80 billion worth of damage. And Ida back in 2021, $76.5 billion worth of damage. And that one strengthened to a category four. So as we look ahead towards September, we are hoping that we do not get anything like that developing, but of course, it can happen and it can happen in a hurry. So we are looking out at the Atlantic Ocean. There are a couple of tropical waves that we've been monitoring, one in the central portion of the Atlantic, but right now it is very disorganized, not really expecting it to do much in the next couple of days. In fact, over the next 48 hours, a near 0% chance that it is going to develop into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. But look at this, as we go into the next week, the next seven days, there is a low chance, about a 20% chance that as it gets closer to some of those Northeastern Caribbean islands, yes, there may be a tropical system that will be forming. Chances are low at this point, and even if it does reach the Caribbean islands, it would still be several days before it could potentially impact us and get into the Gulf of Mexico. But right now, it's still too early to tell, but there is a low chance we could have another tropical system in the Atlantic over the next week. As far as the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, things are fairly quiet there, but that may not last long. As we look ahead to what we typically expect in September, this is usually a very busy, active period for our hurricane season, the busiest month, the most active month. And notice right around the Western Atlantic, that's usually where we have the highest chance for some of these tropical systems to kind of fire up on us. Also the Central Atlantic, another hot spot that we'll watch closely and check it out, Gulf of Mexico in that orange, not the highest likelihood to have formation here, but it is above normal. We are in that likely category to see maybe a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane form for the month of September. So a lot to monitor, a lot to watch. We've still got to get through a very busy period historically between now and September, even the first week or two of October, usually pretty busy. And then things will finally start to kind of calm down as we go through November. But overall, it is going to be a pretty active period. Most likely we are still thinking that the Saharan dust out there will continue to clear out. Water temperatures remain super warm in the Gulf, in the Caribbean, in the Atlantic, and we're switching from an El Nino to a La Nina pattern, which typically favors more tropical development. So all of that basically means don't let your guard down. Things may be quiet now. I don't expect any tropical action messing with your holiday Labor Day plans, but things could get busy over the next few weeks. So of course, keep it here. We'll keep you posted on what's happening every single day with the tropics.